So world's quickest might be a little bit of an overstatement, but we're gonna go from this to this in pretty rapid succession. I still get asked this question from time to time. You know, how do I bake the rounded edge shader to a normal map? And I'm having problems because I'm getting seams and that kind of thing. So this video is gonna blast through the rules really quick. We're gonna show a fast example and uh, keep this URL bookmarked if you get stuck in the future. Let's dive in. So to get things started, we need to define what the high poly cube is gonna look like. And since we're using the rounded edge shader, we're just gonna use a straight up hard edged cube. And if I render this, well, hold on, let me give it the uh, large rounded edge shader. And if I give this a render, you can see we have a nice thick bevel on there and that'll be nice for investigating, for, you know, uh, making sure stuff is turning out the way we think it's turning out. So now for the low poly, I'm just gonna duplicate that high poly cube. I'm gonna rename it LP for low poly, hide the hide the high poly. Now, uh, we're going to be doing the unwrap by strictly following the golden rule when it comes to normal maps, which if you've watched my other videos, you know what it is. Uh, wherever you have a smoothing break on the low poly mesh, you have to have a UV break. But the inverse is not true. You can have a UV break without a smoothing break. That's the basic breakdown of it. So since each face has a, has a hard smoothing break, that means that each face needs to be its own UV island. Or at least that's how I see it. So I will unwrap this with an atlas projection. Each face is on its own thing, and we're good to go. So to set up for the bake, that simply means we need to have the high poly and the low poly turned on. I want to give the low poly its own material, just so it's clear to me what's going on. This is somewhat optional, but it's just the way that I do it. So we'll give it a bright green material and say, okay. You know, this way, when I'm looking at the low poly, I know it's the low poly. Anyway, uh, then I want to add a cage to this or a, uh, in moto terms, a morph map. So, so I add a morph map to the low poly. I call it cage just because that's simple to remember. Use the push modifier to push it out so it completely envelops the high poly. It's a cube, you don't have to double check it, but if you had something more complicated, you might want to give it a, you know, a twirl around and make sure everything is the way you think it is. Looks good. Now I'm going to add a, an image to the low poly material that's going to serve as the normal map. And I've chosen the file on the hard drive. I'm going to set this to linear, yeah, you know, we'll do 2048 just for, you know, speed purposes and say, okay. okay, it comes in, it defaults to, uh, to diffuse color. If you want to click that, go surface shading and choose normal. Now it's a normal map, but it's empty. So, you know, the shading doesn't look right on the low poly yet, but just hang in there. So with all the setup and preamble done, it's time to bake the normal map. So I, I right click my image, choose, choose to bake from object to texture, choose the cage that I set up previously and say go. Now you can see here while it's baking, you can see the edging is, you know, is appearing right on the, uh, on the normal map, which is you know, a good sign. Perfect. Let me uh, hop back into the viewport. Now what I usually do is I'll isolate the low poly, turn off the wireframe and give it a fly around and just look at it. This looks pretty much spot on perfect. There's no cracks, there's no seams, there's, there's nothing happening in here that looks bad. That's a perfectly rounded cube. However, we're still dealing with a hard edged six sided cube, right? So, uh, we're going to take this over to Substance Painter because I want to show you how it comes in there successfully as well. Uh, one note when you're saving on normal maps from Modo is if you save it like this, you're going to be sad because it's in the wrong color space. To save out a normal map, you have to pull down this box here and choose Linear. Then save the normal map. Just a, you know, a little tip that tripped me up for a while when I first started using Modo, but it's pretty essential. And for this last section, we find ourselves in Substance Painter. Uh, I've imported our cube, our six-sided hard-edged cube that we know and love. 
Now I also imported the normal map that I saved out of Moto. So I'm going to drag that over to the normal map slot. And it's just that easy. There's our nice rounded beveled edge. Looks great. It's perfectly smooth. There's no seams. And that's how it should work. It really should be that easy. I get questions from people that it didn't work or it's or it's looking weird or whatever. And yeah, the rounded edge shader has has some limitations with uh, uh, with right angle corners and things like that. But for something like this, for the you know, the quintessential baking example, the cube, you know, it should knock this out of the park. So if you ever find yourself having trouble with Moto not baking correctly, I just set up a quick scene with a cube and bake it and make sure that everything is on the rails. Because that way you'll know whether it's something more complicated or maybe it's just something needs to be twiddled you know, in your scene or what have you. And that about wraps it up. A huge thanks to all of my patrons. You people are making it possible for me to do more of these videos more often. And just know that I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.